everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Thanks for joining me. Another episode we call Show and Tell. So I'm going to show you a lot of the stuff that I have in my garden and tell you a lot. You won't learn a lot from this episode, but it may be interesting because there are different things that people that live in the South, like Houston, Texas, where I live, don't think about growing. Or maybe you thought about growing, but you want to give it a shot. So I'll show you how my fruit and some of my vegetable plants are, are doing. So the three things I'm going to focus on today are number one, I'll show you my apple tree. Yes, apples can grow, or at least the right variety can grow in Houston, Texas. Number two, I'll show you how my lime and my lemon tree are doing uh, and getting ready to do as they start to produce fruit. And third, I've never grown Brussels sprouts before, but I'll show you how the Brussels sprouts are doing. Everybody that I know that guards in Houston, Texas, for some reason, nobody, including me, until this spring has done Brussels sprouts. And then I'll show you some of the other stuff that people do garden pretty well, such as my green bean tree that has produced a whole two bags of beans like this, and it's called the Big Kahuna. Big Kahuna bean, excellent bean. I'll show you that. And lastly, toward the end, I'm getting a lot of questions about this. My last episode, I showed you how my peppers are doing. Now, many of you had bought peppers from me, specifically shishito peppers, which is this pepper, this beautiful red grilling or fresh eating pepper, or the Jimmy Nardello pepper, which is this long Italian either frying or fresh eating pepper. Both of these are absolutely delicious. Now, I did, did, a, did a seed giveaway last year, and my younger daughter did it uh, to collect money. So many of you missed out on it. We, we uh, gave away for $2 a packet uh, a ton of seeds, okay? Well, after my last episode, I got a ton of messages from people saying, how do I get seeds again? So I'm going to do another mini giveaway. It's not really a giveaway because it'll be a small cost. I promise you none of the money is going to me. Don't want the money, don't need the money. Uh, my 15-year-old daughter um, uh, wants to use it for, I don't know, whatever, sneakers or whatever the case may be. It's her opportunity uh, to earn money. But uh, there is a, you know, she's going to spend time taking the seeds out of these peppers, drying them, packaging them, sending them to you. So here's what we're going to do, just like we did last time, is that all you have to do is send $2 and you're going to get 10 to 12 seeds of each of these. Now these are third generation seeds, Jimmy Nardello or Shishido, okay? So these are the instructions. It's real easy. And I'll mention it again at the end of the video. If you want 10 to 12 seeds of this one, uh, the Shishido, and this one, the Jimmy Nardello, um, just include $2 cash in an envelope, send it to the P.O. box that you're going to see in the description box here or at the end of the video. And include a self-return envelope with a stamp on it with your address. And that's all you have to do. Again, $2 per 10 to 12 seeds for each with a self-addressed envelope stamped back to you. Give it 10, to 10 days, 12 days. My daughter's doing all the work. She'll turn it around and send you seeds, okay? Um, I would say um, if, you know, give it, if you're watching this video after May, let's say May 20th or 22nd, you're too late. We probably already sold out. So if you want to do it, act now, send it to the P.O. box, okay? Again, I'm not looking for any money. Don't need it. I've got some great seeds. I want to help my daughters raise money for themselves and actually do some hard work. Lastly, you're probably asking, very unimportant, Jeff, why are you wearing a Harley Davidson shirt and a Harley Davidson hat? The reason is, I don't have any time to get on my motorcycle. If I did, I'd be there. So instead, I'm celebrating with you, uh, doing gardening, I guess. But uh, let me get behind the camera, show you what's going on. Hope you enjoy it. Again, this is Show and Tell. Thanks. All right, let's get started with the apple tree. So this is a apple tree. It's a dwarf apple tree. It's a hybrid. And uh, what they do is they graft at the bottom, you'll see there, at the bottom of the tree, they graft a golden dorset with an Anna apple tree, okay? So the two of them pollinate each other and we get apples, okay? So with apple trees, most of you know, they do require an X amount of frost hours, okay? So they require, many of them require 300, 400, 500, 600, which means you have to have frost, uh, uh, a cold in the off season 
Uh, the, these type of trees certainly like it. When they get that coldness, um, they're able to produce apples in the spring or fall, depending on what apple tree you have. So the thing about the Anna apple and the Golden Door set is that they are adjusted to a tropical climate. So they only require 80 to 100 frost hours versus 500 to 600, like more the uh, the Macintosh and some of the more popular apples that you'll see uh, in the grocery store, okay? So uh, this is the apple tree. It's meant to be, you know, 13 to 15 feet high. Now the problem, as you'll see, is it's up against my fence. So all the apples that are up against the fence, the squirrels run along, grab them, eat them, and they take them. So I'll show you what a few of them look like. And um, so here we go. So here's three apples uh, that I have uh, that are growing. These aren't the full size. And these appear to be uh, the Golden Dorset apple, okay? Now they're a little bit tartar. They're not as delicious as Golden Delicious, but once they get the full grown, they're actually pretty decent, okay? And I have some others as well. I'm not gonna go through the entire tree, but I'll show you one that's a little bit bigger. And you can see this in my hand. So it kind of looks like a Golden Delicious apple. And uh, uh, they're actually pretty good. That's kind of a weird shaped one. And there's, uh, there's a few more down there. Let me get down here, sorry for the noise. And there's a few more down here. So it is possible certainly to grow apples in Houston, Texas. And uh, I know I'm gonna get, I have a lot of viewers that are in Houston, Texas. You're gonna ask, where do I get them? Um, Enchanted Gardens in Richmond is the only place that I'm aware that you can get them, okay? So when you plant an apple tree, it's gonna take two or three years to produce apples. It doesn't just happen, there's another one right away. Um, it does take a, a little bit of time, but uh, if you give it some time, you fertilize it well, you will have apples. And for those that, uh, you know, you don't live in Houston, Texas, just uh, Google your local area and uh, you can certainly get to find a place to buy apples in your local area. Okay, and there's a few more down there as well. Okay, and, um, or you can buy them online. But my, my, my recommendation, if you're gonna buy an apple tree, anything that says dwarf in Houston, Texas, uh, or any South Texas or any part of the Southeast, Orlando, Mississippi, Georgia, we all get a ton of rain. So anything that's dwarf, like people buy in California, is really full size in Texas because of the amount of rain we get, okay? So that is the Anna Apple Golden Dorset Apple Tree that can grow in tropical climates. Let me move next to my lime tree. So this is an example of what I was talking about with nothing in Texas is dwarf, okay, or any of the southeast because of the amount of rain we get. This is supposed to be a, uh, let's say a uh, five, three to five foot uh, dwarf lime tree, Meyer lime tree. It's actually eight to nine, almost eight to nine feet, okay, and it's only three or four years old. An example of what dwarf does in Houston, Texas. Now, if you take a look at this, this hasn't yet produced limes completely, but it's got some beautiful flowers all over the tree, okay that will uh, indeed turn into limes, okay? At least most of them will turn into limes. So it goes from that category to another one that looks like this, okay? And then on there, you'll see there's all these little looking baby limes on here. So this small Meyer lime tree will produce somewhere around, um, I'd say 50 to 70 limes, more than probably one family could ever use you can certainly give a, a lot of the limes to your neighbors. And I'll try to get a sneak peek of just all the flowers. And if you've never f smelled uh, a lime blossom, they're unbelievably, they, they just smell so good. Obviously the, the bees love them, the uh, butterflies love them, and uh, they just smell delicious. So that's an example. But this tree is just loaded. Now what we did to get this loaded is we did fertilize it very well in the off season and you need to really do that so when the spring comes you have lots of buds which lead to lots of limes okay so i think there's some more of what it looks like again some of them will fall off this one will fall off this one will stay on okay so not every one of them uh, is going to turn into a lime but thank goodness otherwise we'd have uh, 600 limes on this tree okay so that's the lime tree let me show you my true dwarf um, lemon tree. So here's the lemon tree. The lemon tree, we've had this thing for, wow, eight to ten years. And it's in a pot. It's in the same pot. Now every season we add additional soil and additional fertilizer because again, like I just said, for the lime tree you need to do that. Uh, this is a Meyer lemon tree, okay? 
and um, you see it looks really good really healthy the leaves are green and um, what we have to do in the off season we have to crop it so there's some dead branches we got to keep it under control but keep in mind the only way like I said before that a, a dwarf tree is going to stay dwarf is uh, probably to put it in a pot so this one as you'll see is in a pot the other one I just showed you the mar lime is in the ground anything that you put in the ground in a rainy environment will just not stay dwarf for very long now it's not going to be the same size as a, a regular lime tree but it'll be somewhere in between a dwarf and a full-size tree because the roots have an ability to spread out when it's in a pot like this the roots don't have an ability to spread out so it will contain to some extent the size of the plant so again this is a result of fertilization now this lime this lemon tree excuse me is further along and you'll see a bunch of lemons on this tree okay and when the lemons are small they do appear to look like limes but trust me they will turn into a beautiful brilliant yellow so let's just kind of go around here and there's just a bunch of lemons that are on this tree and this is really perfect for people that live uh, in apartments or back uh, or, uh, or townhouses or condos and uh, I'll spare you all the lemons but there's just a ton of baby lemons on this tree and I'll tell you thing, the thing about this which I love about the Meyer lemon tree is that these lemons are so juicy one lemon has, compared to a store-bought lemon has probably got two to three times more juice in it than a regular one so they're delicious so Meyer lemon trees are, re are relatively easy to buy in the south they're very much available Houston Garden Centers has them in Houston um, just about everybody has Meyer lemon Meyer, Meyer limes again the dwarf apple are a little bit harder to uh, to to, uh, to buy now the one thing I would warn you about this tree unlike the one that's in the ground is that they will die with frost okay so you do need to cover it up you need to give it some type of a heat source for a Meyer lemon Meyer lime so for whatever reason uh, we didn't have it cold enough this year I did cover my limes and lemon trees they were fine apples won't die from the frost they'll do fine they like the frost hours okay so let me show you one more which is my uh, Brussels sprouts and then actually two more and then um, we'll close it so sorry for the extra noise I keep this next to my air-conditioned vents as you can see but I'll try to talk loud so these are these long things are the Brussels sprout trees okay they're Brussels sprout plants excuse me um, look at these things they're just long and what you'll see is that once Brussels sprouts start to grow you take off you pop off these the leaves the, ste uh, the stems of the leaves and you get rid of them and that forces the Brussels sprouts as you'll see on the side to pop out so um, they're coming along hopefully another two weeks we'll have Brussels sprouts so I don't maybe some people eat the leaves I do not eat the leaves but as you'll see um, you know all these Brussels sprouts are starting to these nodules are starting to pop out again I'm hoping in two or three weeks we will have some but let me show you this other one too closer look okay pretty cool so it's the first year that I've grown these and um, you know I'll do better next year but I love Brussels sprouts and uh, if you live in the south you can do it it's getting a little bit late in the season so um, but I still see the farmers market selling Brussels sprouts so uh, hopefully I'll have the same uh, success I probably would start them a little bit earlier last year and I was probably a little bit late to picking off these leaves okay so I probably should have started them sooner because the growth of course goes to the Brussels sprout and not to the leaves so live and learn we all learn from gardening my last one is the bean tree let me show you the green bean tree now I have no idea why I keep saying tree green bean vine okay I guess I need more coffee this morning let me try to get out of the sun but this is the big big kahuna uh, green bean uh, and I only I think planted three of these two or three of these but they're just loaded so um, these are decent size uh, green beans as you'll see um, by by these but uh, I showed you the bag that we already picked already and then uh, I'll show you uh, a few more of these what they look like and then pretty much I think this will be the end of the uh, green bean so this is what they look like a good size green bean uh, big kahuna they call it if you haven't tried it give it a try I think the green beans are they're pretty sweet um, uh, great to eat put a little of, uh, butter salt pepper on them grill them up steam them whatever you do and you're good to go but 
Uh, three plants right here has produced more green beans than my family of four uh, can probably eat in four to six weeks. So that's all you need. Um, and uh, that's the green beans. So I'll just kind of take you in here. They are just loaded. And uh, yeah, they're really good size too. So um, they're very productive. And, uh, you know, sometimes I've got some other beans and they just don't, uh, they don't uh, seem to be as good as these. So I'm really happy with these. So, um, lastly, let me just kind of talk about uh, real quick. I'll skip over to my uh, cucumbers, and as I talk about the Jimmy Dardello plants, I'll kind of give you an example of, or uh, talk to you about what needs to happen to that. So again, if you want the Jimmy Dardello pepper or the Shishido pepper, it's just two dollars cash in an envelope to the PO box you see in the description box here. Okay and with a self-addressed envelope it'll come back to you i don't get any money from it my daughter will take it use it for fundraising for herself uh we'll get it out to you okay um i showed you the shishito is a long red one excuse me the shishito is a shorter one the red the longer red one is the jimmy nardello pepper both are sweet neither are hot if you want 10 or 12 seeds of each send two dollars in for each it's pretty simple that is it I'm glad I could help uh, show and tell with you, or share show and tell with you. And if you have any interest in the seeds, just send it in, we'll get them out to you. Again, if you are listening to this or watching this video after May 22nd, 2018, do not send cash, do not send your order. We'll probably be all sold out. If we are sold out and we get your money, we'll send it back to you, okay? So you may want to rush as soon as possible. So this is Jeff, your executive gardener. Until next time, thank you. Make it a great one.